All right, welcome back, everybody. It's the Mike Broomhead Show. I'm Barry Markson, filling in in this uh, New Year's Happy New Year. When's the latest you can say Happy New Year? Can I can I say it one more day, or is this it now? Is it is it over the top? I know Gatos has a cutoff. You can't say it after a certain day. Uh, well, Happy New Year. I don't care what Gatos says. Uh, we're excited to have uh, joining us in studio is uh, uh, Arizona's Attorney General Chris Mays. And as always, thanks for being here at KTAR. Thanks for having me, Barry. Happy New Year. And there you go. <laughs> Happy New Year. Well, excited to have you. Uh, you know, you've been in office. Uh, we were just talking for a year. And- and it's it's been a whirlwind of a year. Um, and I know any any time you go into a big office like this, and I always remind people, the attorney general's office, you are the number one, the top law enforcement officer in the state of Arizona. That's what that office is. And and there are so many lawyers. It's the largest law firm in the state. That's what that is. You're managing the largest law firm in the state and all the law enforcement component that comes with that. Right. It's criminal. It's civil. It's child protective. It's every, it's all of those different parts. Um, how many how many attorneys does the attorney general's office have? So we have a total of um, about a thousand employees, and about half of those are attorneys. Okay. Maybe a little bit less. But it, to your point, you're right. We have attorneys we have a criminal division we have a civil division state government division where we represent all of the state agencies and we re- we uh, uh, represent um, the Department of Child Safety we represent um, you know kids um, essentially in the in the DCS system um, so it's a big job we also yeah. have uh, investigators Barry so we have a mini police department inside the AG's office 60. Uh, sworn peace officers, law enforcement officers. So yeah, it's a it's, big job. It's, it's an awesome lot. job. Yeah, you're enjoying it. I love it. All right, I lo- absolutely <laughs> love it. How could you not love this job? And it's a great state uh, to be doing it in. Well, that's great. Chris Mays is with us, Arizona's Attorney General. So let me ask you a couple questions. I, I saw recently, uh, and I think we talked about it here on KTR. There was a big uh, settlement with Google for yep. seven hundred million dollars. Arizona was a, a plaintiff in that case. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened, and how much money does Arizona get from that settlement? So that was about a $700 million settlement nationwide with Google. And it was an antitrust case that sort of was related to the way that they were monopolizing and handling their advertising. Um, And so uh, we, Arizona and I think most of the other states, if not all of the other states, were in that case. It was a bipartisan antitrust case. Um, and we won it and uh, won a $700 million settlement. That'll be divvied up between the states, Arizona, you know, I, it, it, maybe in the $20 million range that hope, you know, almost all of that will go back to, to customers. Um, but, it, you know, I think it's an example of the kind of case that I am interested in. We right. have antitrust laws in this country, in the state. <clears throat> Um, they haven't been used very often, right. frankly, uh, and I'm I'm worried about monopolization and and the way that that concentration of power, corporate power, is impacting consumers negatively. So that's one of the yeah. reasons, for instance, that we're taking such a close look at, and will likely oppose the Kroger Albertsons merger. Oh, really? Yeah, and I and and I, you know, I'm saying that today, and uh, you know, we're we are almost certainly going to oppose that. I'm waiting to see what the FTC does with that. Um, and, you know, if they formally oppose that merger, then we will likely join them in that. But I'm, I'm going to be pretty clear here with you that we're we are going to oppose that. Okay. And that when we say Kroger Albertsons, Kroger in, in Arizona is Fry's. Yeah. So it's so Fry's and Safeway. And, uh, yeah. And so Fry's, Safeway, Smith's up in uh, northwestern Arizona. Okay. There's a few Smith's left. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> up in Mojave County. And that's something I did. We went all over the state and did public comment sessions on that town halls to hear from people in Arizona. And overwhelmingly, Barry, people said, we don't want this merger to happen. Yeah. Overwhelmingly, yeah. people did Well, didn't I remember want. when Albertsons merged with Safeway yeah. and, and that closed stores. I yeah. mean, Albertsons, they, they closed stores. It, it was, was terrible yeah. for Arizona. Yeah. Terrible. And they, they claimed they weren't going to close stores. They claimed they weren't going to lay people off. And then, you know, within a year, they had essentially done that. Right. Because financially, that's what you're going to do. It, yeah. it just makes too much sense. Yeah. Chris Mays is joining us. She's Arizona's attorney general. Um, and so let, let me ask you this. The I know you're working a lot with, uh, is it uh, the homes for uh, retired people and, and really some of the abuse and things that, that goes on there. Tell me some yeah. of what the attorney general's office is doing. So this is a major priority of mine, which is to combat elder abuse and to, to really go after uh, 
abusive uh, nursing homes and uh, uh, memory care facilities that are not providing the level of care that they must provide under the law or that are allowing abuse to occur. And so we have actually uh, the ability to file criminal charges, but we also have the ability under a statute that's never been used before in Arizona, it's a civil statute, to go after these owners okay. of these facilities civilly for millions of dollars. Um, and recently, in the last few weeks, we intervened in a case where we are making the argument that these arbitration clauses that allow for secrecy in uh, litigation, which, you know, families that have seen their loved ones abused in these facilities, they're being forced into these arbitration clauses. And yeah. as a lawyer, you probably know something about this type of thing. Right. And it's just really bad because it, the, that secrecy prevents me from doing my, my job, which is to go after these facilities. And the people of Arizona, when, you, when they put a loved one in a memory care facility or in a nursing home, we have a right to know what kind of a track record that right. facility has. So we not only are going to hold them accountable uh, in court for abusing people, but we're also going to try to fight these arbitration clauses that are that that, so that you know have this cloak of secrecy. So that information will come out. Yeah, we're fighting. We're fighting to to make sure that information comes out. Yeah. Chris Mays is uh, with us, the Attorney General. Let, let me ask you this: I've, I've been talking about this all day. Uh, your office is investigating uh, what I call the fake electors, the the Republicans who sent in uh, a fake elector form as if Trump had won the election in Arizona when he obviously hadn't. Uh, other states have prosecuted their fake electors. George Georgia, Michigan, uh, Nevada, there may be another. Um, it, where is Arizona? I know this investigation is ongoing. I know you're not going to give me too much detail, but I'm going to ask anyway. Where, where, what is the status of that investigation? Yeah, well, so I'll, 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 um, answer, I'll answer your question directly in a second, but I wanted to just say just a few uh, things first. You know, I, so, so I, during my Christmas break, I've been reading Liz Cheney's book, oh. um, which is a really great read, and I, I, I recommend it to, to anyone. And it talks a lot about January 6th. We're about to come up here on the yeah. anniversary of January 6th. And um, she talks a lot about, you know, uh, the duty that we all have, especially those of us who are elected, but that all of us as Americans have to protect our democracy for future generations. And I believe that deeply in my soul and my core. That's one of the reasons I ran for this office, uh, especially after seeing January 6th happen, um, and and the need to protect American democracy, especially here in Arizona. I mean, we know that American democracy runs through Arizona in many ways, and I think that's something that we saw also with the fake electors, which was, um, you know, uh, it would appear an effort to to undermine our democracy right. and so the question obviously is whether um that uh rises to the level of, of a criminal act and that's something that i've been clear we are investigating um i you know i can't get into too many details about that investigation but i, I just wanted to say that because i think it's important to yeah. for people to know why we're doing it right um, that it's not partisan, um, and it, it really, for me, is about making sure that this doesn't ever, ever happen again in Arizona, and I right. know the other AGs that are looking at this f feel the same way in their states. All right, so I know uh, Kenneth Chesbro spoke with Nevada, and then uh, the prosecutors there, and then shortly after that, we, we saw some criminal charges filed. I know he came and spoke with your investigators here in Arizona. Kenneth Chesbro was Trump's lawyer. He pled guilty right. to charges, uh, criminal charges in Georgia and has been cooperating since then. Was his interview here with your investigators helpful to your investigation? So I'm not going to talk too much about the people that we're interviewing. Okay. Um, Just tell me what he said. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally understand the, the desire to know what's going on inside the investigation. We And the reason that I'm being pretty guarded about this is that I think it's important that we allow our investigation investigators and our lawyers to do this investigation, to do it professionally. Um, I don't want to engage in the kind of midstream updates that sure. my predecessor engaged in, uh, which I didn't think was appropriate. Um, but I will say that the, with regard to Mr. Chesbro, you know, he, he was interviewed in, in Nevada, and uh, Nevada had a uh, 
statute of limitations that was, I believe, sometime in January. So okay. they were dealing with a very exigent sort of situation. They had a move. They had a move. Yeah. Uh, we don't have that statute of limitations. Okay. And so we, we want to do this investigation thoroughly completely uh, don't take too long it's killing me <laughs> <laughs> well no and it, you can't let things drag no, on as well so there's there's that that tug and uh pull of uh push and pull of you know you want to do things thoroughly professionally but you also know that you cannot let things drag out all right real quick uh, chris mays is here the attorney general uh, give me a quick rundown very quick of of just the stuff in your first year what the attorney general's office has done what have you done in that first year oh man what have you it, been doing i mean it's <laughs> been a busy year so we uh you know one of the, again w- you know created this elder abuse task force started to really go after elder abuse we're attacking uh, the fentanyl crisis on on many levels uh including prosecution uh, of, of fentanyl and seizing fentanyl on the streets. We've seized, uh, you know, millions of fentanyl pills in Arizona and are doing uh, most of the, uh, the most of the big drug investigations there, fighting the drug cartels. It's a huge, huge yeah. problem in Arizona. Um, you know, we really are working hard to protect consumers, to take our antitrust laws seriously working on water you know we were successful in stop you know getting yeah. uh uh one of the leases uh, that went to the saudis canceled we got several wells that they were going to drill canceled i you can anticipate in 2024 that i'm going to keep working on that they are still out there in western arizona they still have one huge alfalfa farm and the united arab emirates the emiratis have a second huge farm that is affecting the town of Wendon dr- dramatically. Yeah, that was one of the, I, I thought one of the greatest things your office did early on was was canceling those Saudi contracts. You had talked about that in the campaign, but just such a, it's just such an abuse to take Arizona's water, our one of our, it's the most precious resource we have, it's, and it's for Saudi Arabia. It makes no sense. Barry, to me, it's so. insane. And yeah. I got to tell you, uh, everywhere I go in Arizona, uh, this is what people really want to talk about. Water is top of mind and m- whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent, you understand and yeah. you agree that this is insane. Yeah. That we, we would be giving our water away to free to the South for free to yeah. the Saudis. I, I gotta still stop. I still don't understand how that happened. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> Attorney General Chris Mays, thank you so much for being here, taking thank the time you. to be here. I appreciate that. Thanks, Barry. Thanks for watching the Mike Broomhead Show. Tap to watch the first season of Amazing Arizonans, a KTAR News podcast. You can also click the button in the middle to subscribe.